Uh, so let's have a look at lab 3 now. What we're going to do is look in, in more detail at uh, HTTP, DNS and FTP. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll look at our traces. See if we can make some sense of them. And we'll just place them over here. Okay, so we'll just start Wireshark. So Wireshark has a, has a filter command that we can use to, to make things a bit easier for us. Uh, so there's the sin, sin ac, ac, there's some of the get, but if we wanted to quickly look to see if we could get, uh, see all the requests uh, that allows us to, to get all the requests and then we can put some detail on it if they're equal to get, then it shows us that. Okay, so basically we're getting three files here of three requests. We're getting the top level which is slash. We're getting 2.css and favicon.ico is the three main requests that we're actually making. So if we want to look at the responses that came back, we can see here there's a 200, a 200 and a 404, which is a file not found. Okay, so now we need to find the name of the file, which is returned for the for the top level. Okay, so uh, when we do a, a when we request, we'll, we'll do a get. So we'll find our first get. So that's getting the, the top level here. Okay, and here is the response that comes back. So you can see here the file that's coming back is called iisstart.html. Okay, and that's on that server. So it's asked for the slash, which is the top level, and the file that's came back is iisstart. Uh, so what's the image types that it accepts? Well, when we send the get, it will actually define the image types that we accept. PNG, JPEG, GIF. And an XX bitmap. And so on. Then the next question is the language character set. So we can see the character set that accepts is UTF, 8-bit ASCII, 16-bit ASCII, and the language is English GB. So can we find out what the web browser that the client is using? So here we see here, user agent equals, and we can actually see this is Opera 9.8. The date the web pages were accessed. Well, we can normally find the date as part of the reply that comes back. Okay, we can see the server technology. And we can see there the 2nd of January 2010. Okay, so we can do the same again for for this next trace. Okay, but what we'll do is uh, we'll actually start to, to capture for a web page. So again, we just uh, run Wireshark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, capture in this case from a local network okay and here's the capture 
So again, we can do our usual thing again. And we can see there was uh, three requests here. So again, we can look at uh, the same types of information, but this time we've actually captured it from a real life network trace. Next thing we'll look at is uh, DNS. DNS is an extremely important protocol that allows us to resolve our domain names into IP addresses. Okay, so here we are. So this is the trace for uh, a DNS. This is the sequence it goes through. Uh, the domain that has been searched for is intel.com. The IP address is requested with the A record. So the A record, when we get a response coming back, the A record will actually tell us what the IP address actually is, or the IP addresses that are associated with the domain. So we can see here and here are the two uh, the two IP addresses. So when we do intel.com Okay, so it's changed in this one, but there's the two IP addresses now. And these were the two that were returned there. Okay, so the the PTR is our first request. And the PTR re returns what's called the kind of code name, and it's like the 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 home, the top level uh, domain f for the record. And the next one is the A record, which is the IPv4, IP version four, and IP address, and then the AAA defines. Uh, an IPv6 address. So it depends if it's been registered for IPv6, whether there's an IP address in there or not. Okay, so the next part is to, to be able to capture the uh, real data packets, do an NS lookup on imperial.ac.uk, and what you find in this case is that there is actually an IPv6 address for this okay so let's try it okay so uh, an ipv4 address looks like this and an ipv6 address much longer it looks like this okay so when you capture the data packets you should be able to see with the AAA record that uh, we we will get a return back for that. So when we do our NS lookup and we set our type equal to A and we do our website, we get the IPv6 address and then when we ask for the IPv6 one, Again. There we go. It comes out like that. Okay, so from the trace you should be able to, to spot that. The next trace we'll have a look at is FTP. And with FTP we should see uh, there's a whole lot of commands that are actually used. So here's an example. So if we do ftp.command Request dot command. It should give us all our commands. So we can see there the user puts administrator, password, syst, pwd, present working directory, list, and so on. Okay, so we can see there's the store. That's where we upload a file and retrieve is where we get the file back again. We can look at ftp.response. 
see all the responses that have came through. And we can have a look at the codes. And here are the codes that come back. Okay, so to determine the username and password, uh, we can actually go back. Uh, one way is, as we've seen with the command, well, what would this will follow the stream? And we can actually see all the commands. So user and pass, yeah, administrator and password was the username and password that was used. Uh, next, we look at the command equals list fdp dot request dot command equals list and we can see there's three places where the user has actually done a list so next we need to actually identify the listing of the files on the server so we find the list and then straight away it creates a new connection. The new connection is made on the server on port 1078. So if we now follow this stream, we can actually see part of it here. And that's listing the, the directory. In this case, we can have a look again. So that's that one really was a was a false start there. Looks like the user is disconnected. So again, we'll find the list again, and it's packet 126. So now we'll actually follow the TCP stream, and we can actually see that there are there is a one file, and there is a directory called directory, and this is because the user has uploaded that file onto the server. Okay, and we can also identify a response code of specific response code equal to two two seven in this case. And here we see the command, the, the reply that comes back that identifies the TCP port which will be open up on the server. So it's 256 times 4 plus 254 is the port that's actually opened. So if we actually look, then we should be able to see that that port 1078 is the port that's set up for the, the actual transfer. Okay, so this is shown this tutorial.